Hello guys, in this video I want to share with you 11 not so obvious Unity tips. I personally use all of them and I hope they will be as helpful to you as they were to me. Alright, let's dive right in. As a Unity developer, you probably have to instantiate a prefab very often. In many projects, I see this pattern. There is a reference to a game object, which is the prefab you want to spawn, then it is passed to the instantiate method. Finally, you get the component to do some logic on it. There is actually a very simple way to avoid doing this get component operation. You just need to expose a reference to your specific type instead of game object. In this case, it means referencing a player type. Now, in the inspector, you will only be able to drag prefabs that have a player script attached to them. This means that you also reduce the risk of dragging a prefab that does not have the correct component. It may happen sometimes that you need to reduce the build size, especially when making WebGL or mobile games. In that case, it's important to know how much size are assets taking in your build. Step 1. Make a build of your game. Step 2. Select your console, click on the three dots and select Open Editor Logs. Then, scroll down or search for Build Report until you reach the Build Report section. Here, you can quickly see the total size of your build and the repartition between different asset categories. You can also see a detailed list of all your assets ordered by their size in descending order. This is really helpful, as you can now know what to optimize. Since Unity 2021.1, the Quick Search tool is included by default in the editor. Even if it's in the editor, it's still a bit hidden. You open it by clicking on the magnifying glass icon on the top right of the editor, or pressing Ctrl plus K, or Command plus K on Mac. With this tool, you can search for anything easily. Drag and drop assets to your scene. Use menu commands and create objects for example or look for a specific setting or window. You can actually do much more with this search tool, so if you want to learn more about its feature, check out the link in the description. Now that you know about the search tool, let's see how we can use it in a different context. Let's imagine that you want to apply a specific material to your player. You would expose a material field and reference it in the editor. Well, we can do more. Let's imagine we want to restrict the choice of materials to blue materials. If you add the Unity Engine search namespace, you can add the search context attribute. In here, you can add filters the same way you would normally in the project search bar. For example, T material to restrict to materials, and then blue to filter materials that have blue in their name. If we go back to the editor, we can see that it will already apply these filters and make it easier to choose a desired material. However, I don't like this layout. We can't really see the material visually. Let's go back to the code and add a parameter. Search view flag, and let's choose the grid view one. Now, when we click to select a material, it will display the search results with the layout we specified. Adding a visual preview is very useful for any kind of assets. Alright, now let's move on to the next tip. Let's use the search tool to find it. Let's search for Enter Play Mode option, then select the Project Editor setting. Then, let's look down until we find it. This Play Mode option exists since Unity 2019, but I am surprised by the amount of people that still don't use this on a daily basis. By enabling this, you can enter and exit Play Mode instantaneously. It's at least 90% faster than the regular Play Mode. How is that possible? Well, because by enabling this you can avoid the usual domain reload? Of course this means your static variables will not be reset, but you can always reset them yourself or not use static variables in the first place. Don't forget to enable reload scene, as this will make sure your scene is cleaned up properly. Let's try first without the option. It's so slow and it took around 5 seconds. Now let's try with the option. Wow! As you can see, we entered play mode instantly. Have you ever wondered how you could create your own color palette usable in the editor? Well, it's pretty easy. Just select any color field, then go down to swatches and open the menu. Then click on create new library. Give it a name and choose to save it in the project folder. You can then find it under asset editor. Select it, then click on edit. Now, feel free to add any colors that you want. All right. Now that our palette is set up, 
we are able to select it from any color field. You are now able to select colors from your own custom color palette. Nice! This next tip is for all the mobile developers out there. For this one, you will need to switch your platform to Android or iOS. Did you know that since Unity 2021, you can switch the game view window to a new view called Simulator? This enables you to easily check how your game looks like on different devices. You can even add custom device resolutions. While you're making a game, it happens often that you want to remove an object that was reference in a field. I used to do it this way. Click on the small dot, go to the top, and select none. Well, I learned recently that there is a less painful way to do this. Instead, simply click on the field and press backspace. That's it. When trying to move elements in your scene, you might have experienced the situation where you click on an object and Unity selects the mesh renderer instead of the parent object. Sometimes you don't realize it, so you move this object. Later, when you play your game, you go crazy trying to understand what is wrong. Well, personally, this happened to me often, and when it did, I almost considered switching to Unreal. However, I have found a solution. Most of the time, the parent game object will have a script attached to it. In this case, the object has a player spawner script. Open the script and simply add the selection base attribute on top of your class name. Now when you click on the object, it will actually force it to select the parent and not the child mesh. You are probably familiar with the start method. Well, did you know that it can actually become a coroutine? You simply need to change the return type to an I enumerator. Then you can wait for a few seconds before doing your logic. Let's double check if it works. Yes, awesome. As a developer, creating new objects in your scene is probably something you have done thousands of times. Remember how when you create a new object, it spawns it at a position facing the camera? I always wanted to change that, and it was driving me crazy. Well, if you go to Preferences, then Scene View, you can enable Create Objects at Origin. This will make sure that any new object created spawns at 000. Okay, now I know the title of the video says 11 tips, but I want to give an extra tip for those of you who kept watching until here. You probably use debug logs all the time. Well, did you know that you could add a comma after your log message and pass a reference to an object? Then, in the editor, if you click on the log in the console, it will ping that game object in the hierarchy. Pretty useful to find which object is causing you trouble. Alright, that's it for this video. I will probably do another video with more tips soon. Please let me know if these were useful or share your own tips in the comment section below. Don't forget to join our Discord channel. All the useful links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.